Well, here we are again. Here we are again. Round 12. Review against the West Coast Eagles. Uh, Sunday SCG game. 10 goals, 13, 73. To 14 goals, 11, 95. I felt really nervous to hit record today. I don't really, I don't really generally feel that. There's, for me, there's such a, oh, there's such a gravity to every word that gets spoken about this week. Um, in my opinion, there's there's a there's a emptiness. It's just beyond anger. It's just beyond, it's beyond disappointment. It is so far gone from that now. It's so far gone from anger and hurt. And, you know, that's just a given now. The anger and the hurt and the frustration and the and the sadness is just, that's where things start. Then you have this, like, there's just this question of, like, purpose. And there's this question of, like, like, why? Why am I bothering? Why are we bothering? Why do we care so much, you know? And I really look forward to this week because th- th- this is going to be one of the more challenging weeks the football clubs had in, in, in you know, this rebuild in, in, in this, this, this entire club's existence over the last five to six years. And anyway, um, it's, this is going to be a, a real therapy session for me. I'm, um, really feeling the pain of everyone from, from the fan cams last night. And it was so beautiful. Last night was beautiful because it was, it was done in a way that was emotional. It was, it was honest. It was raw. Um, nobody crossed the line. And, and it was quite beautiful to, to have a place where we could all come and, and chat and, and express ourselves. But let's talk a little bit about the game. I mean, I, I, first of all, I'm going to say, I'm going to apologize. I'm going to apologize because I, I find a way to believe every week. And I'm, you know, sometimes project that into, you know, my videos and, you know, Instagram posts and, and I think it comes from a place of like wanting to manifest the win and, and wanting it so badly that if I speak it into existence, maybe it'll help. But it's giving people false hope sometimes, you know. Um, but we all try and latch onto something. And I, I, I just, oh, the way that they came out of the race, serious faces, I'm thinking, here we go. No smiles in the race before the game. They're ready to go. Uh, and then the Eagles kick the first three of the game, just like that. And you're thinking... I wasn't thinking it then, but you're just sort of thinking, okay, well, we're going to have to respond here. Uh, maybe it's just going to be the Eagles' early punch and we're going to get on top. Um, we had Liam Stocker on on Liam Ryan from the outset. Oh, that has to be addressed and spoken about, and we're going to speak about that. But I, I noticed that early. Um, the team defensive structure was collapsing very early in the piece, very early in the piece. Um, the symbolic nature of what I saw for the rest of the game came from very early in the piece. There was a contest. Adam Saad approached a West Coast player with the ball. And rather than run through him to tackle him, he sprinted and sort of pitter patted and stopped just in, in time for the West Coast player to get a handball across. And I'm thinking, hang on a minute. Why didn't he go through him and tackle him? Why did he, why did he corral him? Was that instruction or does he not want to hurt the opponent? So I noticed that there. Then I noticed other people doing it too. We, we didn't corral. We, we, sorry, we didn't tackle. We, we corralled and we put um, defensive hands up. That has to be an instruction. They, they did it far too often for it not to be an instruction. So I noticed that. We didn't give up a red time goal. Hallelujah. In the first quarter. quarter. Um, second quarter, my heart sank after Gaff kicked the goal. I never give up in a game early. But I, I, I knew it from there. From Personally, I had it written down right here. I was like, gaff goal, heart sank, we're losing this game. Um, again, I noticed, and I have it here at Capitals, we don't attack the man. Um, Harry comes off, Noons comes on with 12 minutes, 34 to go in the second, and I can hear the excuses already. I'm already hearing them. Mind you, I'm not even going to go through how many of the West Coast Eagles' best 22 were missing from yesterday. I'm not even going to go through it because I'm not using... We all, we all know it. Okay, um, another moment that's very symbolic of a team that has no fucking clue what they're doing. Uh, in the second quarter, the ball spills um, into the West Coast Eagles goal square. It's Saad, Williams, and one more defender. I forget who it was. They all sprint for the ball. 
The ball trickles out. Jermaine Jones, bang. Not one Carlton player stayed. All three of them went for the ball. Just a lack of understanding and communication and an instruction of what to do in that situation. Jermaine Jones goal. We get to half time and I'm just sinking there in the couch. I'm just sitting there in a sinking like nothingness, like a, a nothingness, right? Third quarter, the Eagles start running away with it. And, and at this point, it just becomes, oh, mentally, I had to turn my 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 mind into something else because otherwise you, you go insane. You, you really go insane. You To put so much care and emotional investment into something that's out of your control is fucking crazy, but we all do it because this is our, this is more than a sporting club. It's anyway, it's comical. Williams kicks a goal, and then we concede immediately to Liam Ryan, and that was that was really the theme of the day. Anytime we kicked a goal or got any form of positivity going, they would kick a goal straight away. Like we just have no focus, no focus whatsoever. Third quarter, I'm writing here. It's happening again. I put the laptop down in the fourth, but I had my phone on me, and, and these are the important moments that just symbolize the fourth quarter. Jack Silvani and Betts link up for Betts' goal. That was great, you know, stand up, up and about. That's, that's you know, happy. Um, Betts gives up a 50-meter penalty, unfortunately, moments later. Um, Always has an important shot on goal, 16-24 in the, 16-21 in the fourth, he misses. Zach Williams drops a mark in defensive 50 with 16 minutes to go. Doherty gives up a mark to Jamie Cripps with 14, 30 to go. They, get, they kick a goal, and, and I didn't take any notes after that. I was, I was done. Uh, the, the, there's a... Yeah, it's, it's, so, it's so fucking difficult, man. It's so difficult to, to do this again. Like, and, and like, when are we all collectively going to get together and be on the same page? Not just as fans, but like fans, football club, and, you know, the symbolic nature of the week. What was the big... I mean, I've been talking about this for weeks. You know, I talk about what's the distraction going to be this week? What's the announcement going to be this week? It's either a social justice issue or it's a commercial, commercial, commercially driven issue with the football club. This week, it was a new um, sponsor that was upgrading from a co, co-sponsor to a major sponsor. You know, well done. Great. Off-field success. Fantastic. Like, you know, um, I'm, uh, you know, I'm trying to be very practical as possible. I mean, this morning I had a read of the Constitution. And if you have a look at um, clause number two, the preliminary, one of the preliminary clauses, and it's the objects of the club. And it lists, you know, the club exists for the benefit of its supporters and the community. It seeks to serve this purpose by undertaking the following. And then there's a, a range of dot points Nothing is even spoken about in terms of winning premierships until you get to J, where it says, through striving for success on a sustainable basis, including the pursuit of premierships, everything else has nothing to do with winning. Winning. Um, there is clause A in this, subclause A, which says, um, in playing the game of AFL football to provide its supporters with enjoyment, engagement, fulfillment, and hope of success. Well, they do that. They definitely do that. They give us hope for success. But anyway, you, you can have a read of that there. I'm going to really have a look at that. And then I, I, you know, I'm thinking, I'm always thinking, what's the practical way to move forward? What can, what can I research here? And I had a, I had a memory that came back to me. Um, it was 2018. Um, I was in London at Stanford bridge that the company I was working for in, in Tel Aviv was a, a sports tech company. And we would basically go around the world and work with the major sports clubs in Europe um, and, you know, find, you know, innovative tech solutions to whatever issue they had. And this particular conference was, was a fan engagement conference. So, you know, we were there at Stanford Bridge, you know, Chelsea, Fenerbahce, Shakhtar Donetsk, um, uh, Cologne, FC Köln, um, and we all congregated and, you know, they all told us what they needed from a fan engagement point of view. And I remember talking to the Germans, the Cologne team, um, Esther FC Köln is, is, is the way to pronounce it. And, um, I remember having a conversation with um, he's a gentleman by the name of uh, Philip Lazenfeld, and he was talking to me about um, the, fan, the the ownership of the German clubs, and it's it's a very interesting one. It's it's one I think, you know, if you're interested in it, go and have a look at the way German football is operated because the the fan there's a fifty plus one rule whereby the fans own the club, the you know fifty percent plus one share of the club. You know, it's a fan driven. Um, club and I remember talking to Philip about one of these startups that we had in our network to connect with and 
and and you know suggesting that they should work with with this company and he said no we need to run this by our by our fans first and i was very taken aback by that because this is a a bundesliga club telling me you know no we can't just make a decision like that without consulting the fans and it, it it's prompted me now to go back and and have a look and and really study the german model because you know i i say that story the reason why i'm bringing it up is because we are told that the you know the members are the lifeblood of the Carlton Football Club, our constitution and and whatnot. You know it's it's fan driven. You know the the members own the club, but in the reality, there is I have never ever ever in my thirty years of existence seen more of a disconnect between the club and the fans ever in my life. Um, we had all sorts of people come on the fan cams last night, expressing themselves, pouring them out, and if you haven't listened, the I find, you know, if you if you sift through the anger and you sift through the the frustration and the, and the screaming and the yelling, which not everyone does, some people do. If you listen to the message message beneath it, right, the the common message beneath it. If you listen to the pain beneath it, um, people are now really pushing for change, like really pushing for change. You know, people were talking about protesting and going to the club and you know a spill and and, and all of that and. And, and, you know, the attention shouldn't be on, oh, you know, you're inciting negativity. No, the attention should be on, listen to what is being said. The members are fucking hurting. They're, 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 they're devastated. You know, they're, they're, there's a numbness. There's a, there's a nothingness that's now, you know, eventuating from all of this. We're, we're becoming like a dead, like a, a rotten carcass, you know, full of life. Start of the year. And it, what Ken Corns this morning on SEN said it brilliantly, like, how are we at the end of round 12 and now season's over? If you had said that to, to people at the start of the year, you'd be baffled. Like, it's over now. Like, it's done. It, it's done. You know, how is this group going to, you know, all right, maybe we win, you know, nine nine games in a row, eight games in a row. Like, stop. Stop that. Stop that. There needs to be some sort of evidence to suggest that we can turn this around. And now, is a bye and a week off going to just bring that spark? Is Charlie Kerno really going to bring a spark that has this team playing with unity and spirit? That is probably my number one thing. If I had to summarize everything that I'm seeing, I do not see a team with a soul or a spirit. They don't want to play hard enough. They don't want to. It's a choice. They do not want to play hard enough. They don't want to attack their, their man hard enough. They don't want to play with a ruthless aggression. And like Mark came on last night, he was screaming the house down. And you, you might think he, you know, people, you know, might think, you know, laugh at him or whatever. But like, think about the message. Like, where is the ruthless aggression? It's not there. They just want to. They just want to compete. They don't want to actually dominate or or have any intent. And that's so fuck. That's so sad. That's such an indictment. That's such an indictment on what this club once stood for. You know, there, there's a death, there's a deathly hallow to what's going on. And um, I had a look at another book that I have here, right? This is one of my favorite books. Phil Jackson, it's called 11 Rings, The Soul of Success. Now I want you to bear with me here because I, I literally flicked open this page. This is what I do. I just flicked open and see if I could draw some inspiration. Right? I, I need you to bear with me here because there is, there is a message within this, right? So... Um, Phil Jackson, if you don't know, he coached the Chicago Bulls and then the Los Angeles Lakers. Unbelievable coach. He was very much into his Buddhism and whatnot, which didn't sit well with some of his players. But he, you know, he, there were some lessons that he taught them through that, right? Um, so I'm going to read you this passage. Uh, it's 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 great. Um, in a nutshell, the Buddha taught that life is suffering and that the primary cause of our suffering is our desire for things to be different from the way that they actually are. One moment things may be going our way and in the next moment they're not. When we try to prolong the prolong pleasure or reject pain, we suffer. On the bright side, the Buddha also prescribed a practical way for eliminating craving and unhappiness by following what he called the Noble Eightfold Path. The steps were right view, right thinking, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness and right concentration. I thought the teachings might help explain what we were trying to do as a basketball team. I'm going to read this out. Bear with me. The right view involves looking at the game as a whole and working together as a team, like five fingers on a hand. The right thinking means seeing yourself as part of a system rather than as your own one-man band. 
It also implies going into each game with the intention of being intimately involved with what's happening to the whole team because you're integrally connected to everyone on it. The right speech has two components. One is about talking positively to yourself throughout the game and not getting lost in aimless back talk. I hate the ref. I'm going to get back at that bastard. The second is about controlling what you say when you're talking with others, especially your teammates and focusing on giving them positive feedback. Right action suggests making moves that are appropriate to what's happening on the floor or the field instead of repeatedly showboating or acting in ways that disrupt team harmony. Right livelihood is about having respect for the work you do and using it to heal the community rather than simply to polish your ego, Balenciaga. Be humble. You're getting paid a ridiculous amount of money to do something that's really simple and fun. Right effort means being unselfish and exerting the right amount of energy to get the job done. Tex Winter says that there's no substitute for hustle. And my my addendum is if you don't hustle, you'll get benched. Right mindfulness involves coming to every game with a clear understanding of our plan of attack, including what to expect from our opponents. It also implies playing with precision, making the right moves at the right time, and maintaining constant awareness throughout the game, whether you're on the floor or on the bench. And the final one, right concentration, is about staying focused on what you're doing at any given moment and not obsessing about mistakes you've made in the past or bad things that might happen in the future. Fucking wow. I, you know, hope that you're staying along for this video after I've read that. I know that there was a long passage, but smacked me right in the face. I don't know if that resonates with you as well. That smacked me right between the eyes. Pommy. A pom. 10 years, of t- almost 10 years in his country. Literally in his preview said, what are West Coast going to do? They're going to short kick, and open up the corridor, and that's how they're going to try and expose us. Literally, if a fan of this team can identify how we are going to get picked apart, then what are we doing? What, 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 what's going on? And um, I'm going to sort of summarize it there and leave it there because I don't want to talk too much. Um, I'm going to do a bit of research this week on this German fan model and, and see how I can go with that and see what I can bring there. But um, the best part about this game was that we don't have a game next week. I don't have to, we don't have to sit through the disappointment next week. Um, I said it three weeks ago. Are we really going to sit through 13 weeks of this? Like, come on. When is it going to end? You know, like... A nothingness. I'm I'm so lost for answers. But the one thing I'll always do, always, is I'll fucking show up here. 100%. If I was a board member, or the president, whatever, CEO, if I was a a person leading this, this football club, you bet your ass you'd be hearing from me. Absolutely. Absolutely, you'd be hearing from me. Like, you know, my, my, my message to anyone on the board as a fan, you know, I'm 30 years old. I, I heard a bit about the protests and whatnot. I think I'm a little inexperienced and young to, to congregate into that and, and make a comment on that because I don't really have a total understanding. I like to have a total understanding of something before I speak on it for the most part. And my message to the board would be, you know, I'm not seeing transparency in what our core values are from club to fan. Or you know, from top to bottom, I'm not seeing it. Um, I'm seeing a potentially a new president that's coming on that has come from a board that he's a part of. Um, I'm seeing a coach that coaches this team right now that comes from a group of coaches that failed previously, um, and I'm not confident in the direction and the standards that are being set from board. That's where it starts, all the way down. There's a complete disconnect. And um, if we're desperate enough to be able to move swiftly with our major sponsor in uh, the bank, and I understand that was a good move. That was a good move because Virgin, you know, struggling with the pandemic, but we were able to move swiftly in that regard. Why don't we have the same desperation to make moves swiftly every year when the performances on the field don't come? We have more desperation for finances than what we do winning premierships. That's what I see at the moment at a high level. And, and that's, that's what I would say. That's what I feel. Um, and that's what I felt. That's how I would summarize what I saw last night on the fan cams. And um, I, I would hope that, you know, leaders of the football club were watching last night. Um, 
I really would, I would hope. Uh, you know, if you're not feeling that pain and you're not acting on that pain, this isn't just one week. This is a, a long, we have now, we're at the end of round 12 and we've lost double the amount of games that we've won. Um, you know, the desperation for on-field success has not come. It's not here from club. So um, you're either going to address that or you're not. And unfortunately, the fans are going to continue to live through this for the rest of the season. Guys, we've got 10, <laughs> we've got 10 more weeks of this. We've got a week off and then we've got 10 more weeks of this. So what are you going to do about it? Carlton Football Club, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to do anything about it? I'm going to leave it there. Those of you in the audience, now is absolutely the time um, to put something in the comments and um, detail what what you're feeling, because this is this is this is beyond unacceptable now. It's it's too far gone from unacceptable now. Um, so let me know what, you, what you're feeling. Do you still have hope? And and if you are someone that still has hope and still backs whatever's going on, you, you, you always have a place here to, to express that view. No one here is going to chastise you for thinking the way you feel. That's not what this is about. This is about people having a platform for a voice. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Got to give that player of the game. It's going to be Sam Walsh again. Kid just doesn't stop. Just doesn't stop. He, he just keeps going. And I, I worry about him becoming Patrick Cripps and Sam Doherty and Mark Murphy. You know, guys just limited. You know, they're losing, 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 losing. I worry that it's going to happen to Walshy when he's 24, 25, 26. But right now, he he's the best player that we have right now. And unfortunately, people are, you know, looking for positives by highlighting individual performance. It's, it's we're, we're five years gone from that. We're not doing that anymore around here. We can't, we can't afford to. It's time to start winning and prioritizing winning football games. So I'll leave it there. Let's have a chat in the comments and go the Mighty Blues.